Hey everybody, this is Todd again from Garner, North Carolina. Today is July 30th, 2016. Uh, I thought I'd show everybody some of our melons and go over a few tips to help you grow some large melons. Um, first, I just kind of want to show you what I've got going on. Uh, this is uh, my biggest melon in the patch so far. Uh, the plant's a 230 Dawson. Uh, melon's 44 days old. Um, and it's on a pretty good pace to be a decent melon. This, uh, this little fat rascal over here uh, plants a 316 Edwards. Uh, that melon is day 40 today. Um, it's got a little bit funny of a shape. Um, the stem ends really nice. The blossom ends kind of pointed. Um, so we're going to see how it does. Uh, hopefully it'll grow for another 45, 50 days. And then the third melon we have is off of my 282 Dawson. It's the smallest melon I have. It is also day 40. Uh, it's more of a typical melon for me, a long, skinny, torpedo type melon. Um, but let's get down to business. Um, I've put a few videos on YouTube before and I've got some pretty harsh comments about uh, you didn't tell us how you grow a large watermelon. So today I'm going to go over a few points. Uh, there's not enough uh, memory on, on the film stick to go over everything, but we can cover some some pretty basic points and see what we do um, the first thing by far the most important thing you can do when growing these giant watermelons uh, is before season starts do a soil sample um, go out to your garden uh, collect six or seven samples from uh, various locations mix them up send them into your state lab uh, get a soil test and take a look at what you've got um, it's extremely important if you start out with poor Full soil, uh, don't expect to grow anything uh, of any size to it. Get that report back, go over it, figure out what your 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 pH is, um, study the, the nitrogen, the potassium, the phosphorus, figure out what you've got, make arrangements, uh, do all your amendments. I recommend doing that in the fall, uh, getting your amendments in, uh, letting it sit over winter, maybe do a cover crop of rye. And then in the spring, a month before ready to plant, do another soil test and then fine tune what you have. Um, I'm going to show you our soil here. Um, this was a plant we lost. We had a 255 Mitchell in this bed. We lost the plant uh, about a week ago. But this is a typical soil that we grow in. Very loose, lots of compost. Um, it, it just allows the plants to really, the roots to really just fire through the ground and spread. Uh, you don't want very compacted soils, nice, loose, fluffy, very rich soil. These, these plants, these giants are, are hungry, hungry plants. Um, they have a big appetite. Um, one note I want to make is everything I grow is for competition. Nothing here we eat as far as the watermelons. So a lot of the chemicals and a lot of the things I use are not labeled for watermelons. So if I make a recommendation on something that I use, um, it is not for consumption. Um, just want to make that a note. Um, check any labels on any of your pesticides, your fertilizers, your, uh, your anything that you use. Make sure it's labeled for watermelons if you're going to eat it. Okay, another talking point, uh, plant health. If you don't have a healthy plant, you're, you're, you're doomed from the beginning. We try to spray fungicides at least weekly. Um, and what you want to do with your fungicides is you want to attack fungicides systemically and contact. Um, I use chemical or fungicides such as Dacanil. I use uh, a systemic called Switch. Um, there's Mancozeb. I use, um, then I use some biological um, fungicides. I use uh, companion, I use uh, several others. I also use another systemic, it's called uh, Agrifals. And what happens is you never want to use the same fungicide in a row. You want to rotate through at least three different ones. Uh, that way your plant doesn't build up resistance. Uh, when it comes to pesticides, uh, the main pests we get here in North Carolina for watermelons are one, squash bugs. Horrible, horrible, horrible squash bugs very hard to control you need to stay on top of those early from the beginning um, what what we use is again we do not consume metals 
so I do not recommend any of this for melons you will consume. But we use a chemical called Talstar. Uh, the active ingredient is, is uh, bifen, biffen, something like that. Uh, we use it. We use a systemic called Merit. Um, again, not for consumption. You want to stay on the squash bugs early. What happens is they'll build a resistance up. You do not want them to get uh, high numbers. You want to control them early. Uh, the second other worst one is the cucumber beetles. Um, probably not as bad for us as the squash bugs, but those same chemicals really help with the cucumber beetles. Um, then anybody wants to know, what do you fertilize with? A lot. A lot of stuff. I use a lot of organic fertilizers, a lot of fish, uh, a lot of kelp. Um, the biggest thing I miss is compost tea. I love to make compost tea. I try to do compost tea through the irrigation once or twice a week. Um, simple, simple recipe. I do uh, a cup and a half of worm castings. I do a cup of green grow, which is a mixture of a lot of stuff. It's kelp, humic acid, vulvic acid, that type of stuff. I use three cubes of alfalfa pellets and about three and a half to four ounces of molasses. I add that to five gallons of water. Um, I bubble it for 18 to 24 hours, drain it out, and mix it with water and pump it through the irrigation system. It's a wonderful, wonderful fertilizer, all organic for the plants. It's great stuff. Um, trying to think of some other talking points that could be a benefit. Um, there's certain things, like if you notice this plant, if you look at where this melon is, you see where the stem is, and if you see the runner going all the way back to the crown, you notice how I keep a lot of the foliage and the leaves pruned off of the runner that feeds the melon. If you get a leaf to break and it dies and it falls over on top of that vine, it can cause a rotted spot in it. Um, that can end your season really quick put the racks up on them to get them off the ground. A lot of these melons will grow for 80 to 90 days. You don't want that bottom of the melon sitting on the ground or the pine straw. Uh, it can rot. Uh, this gets good airflow under it. Um, then I know y'all have seen in my other videos, I have everything uncovered now, but we put the shade tents over it. That just keeps the melon shaded. Um, you know, it keeps the rain off of it and it protects it, keeps that skin nice and soft so it can grow. If you see my plants, they don't grow like this. Um, they tend to want to grow like this. Um, what I try to do is, is I let all my runners get out until I get melons set on them. And then I try to keep my plants at around 20 by 20. So I go through once a week, things like this, they get snipped off with scissors. Um, and then I keep my stumps. If you see where the, the crown or the stump of the plant comes up, I try to keep all the foliage clipped away from it so it can get good air circulation, good air flow. Another thing, if you notice a little pea gravel around the stump, that was placed when the plants were small. Um, that way if you get a heavy rain, a big downpour, all the dirt and stuff doesn't splash up on the plants. Um, getting it dirty maybe causing disease. Uh, as the plant grows, we kind of rake it out a little bit and it still kind of keeps that stump from getting dirty when it rains. Um, a big thing on these plants is if you notice, this is one plant, that's one plant, that's one plant, I've got three melons. Every day, you got to come out here and you'll look and you've got to get what we call culls. And you'll see them, just little baby melons. You know, if you're lucky, you get them that size. Um, the way these plants grow, it's not uncommon to find a 20 pounder hiding in here. That's robbing your plant of water and nutrients that that melon there should be getting instead of this little one that we don't want. So that's something that's done every day. Pruning is done weekly um, and just constant overlook. Take a look at your plants uh, during the season. Uh, it's a great idea to, to come in here and take one of these root tips or these vine tips like this. Uh, get you this much of a section, bag it up, send it into the soil lab, have a tissue test run on it. It'll tell you what your plant needs. Uh, it'll tell you what you're low in. Um, other than that, best thing I can tell you is is, is weather is extremely important. Uh, not a lot we can do about it, but weather is important. We've just gone through a pretty good heat wave. We've had some temps up near the hundreds. Um, 
has felt like 115. You can tell the melons have slowed down. Um, will they pick back up when the weather breaks? Hopefully so. They still look good, so I think they will. Um, rain, we haven't had rain in a while, so we're trying to water daily. Uh, I would say each plant's getting between 50 to 70 gallons per day. But you have to remember that sounds like a lot, but you just saw moments ago how fluffy our dirt is. Our dirt drains very, very well. If you're more in a, a clay type situation, you would flood and kill your plants at 50 gallons a day. Um, so you have to kind of adjust accordingly to what kind of soil you have as to what your water needs. You can always read your plants. If your plants look great, they're good. Uh, what I try to do is, is when I come down here, I reach up under the, the shade cloth, I grab a handful of dirt, I squeeze it um, to get a feel for what the soil feels like. So other than that, uh, we're about halfway through the season. Hopefully these plants can go another 45 or 50 days and hopefully we can do a summary at the end of the season. Good luck and best of growing. Thanks.